I am the Eggman. He is the Hedgehog. This is the final zone. Cuckoo Kachoo. You are now going off with RC and Views. Views, how you doing? We don't have many bits on this show. We don't have many recurring segments. So we rely on the XXL Freshman Cypher to give us a yearly segment. And that's basically it. So we didn't talk about the freshman class when it was announced because... You know, no shade to the group, but I'm really not familiar with too many of these people. I know, uh, Flo Millie. That was literally the only person I had heard of was Flo Millie. Moray because of the hit that he had, and then uh, maybe Poosh, I think. But it's purely one of those, like, I've seen their name on Spotify. <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. This is, except for Flo Millie, the only time I'd ever heard these people. So this is a very unbiased take and opinion on this based purely on their performance in the double xl freshman class of 2021 freestyle ciphers and we are going to rank them from worst to best i would imagine mm -hmm. correct yeah 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 rc i'm gonna ask you first who do you have in the unenviable 10th spot. <laughs> the fucking MTV 10th spot. Oh, most definitely. Your girl, Koi Lorray. Good lord. I gotta agree. <laughs> she seems fun. Yeah, you know, she's having a good time. I'm not, but... <laughs> and, like, I thought it sounded like part of what could be a decent song. Like, it sounded like the end of a good song. Yeah, some of these do, honestly. <laughs> but it's nothing. Like, it's literally nothing. So... I have nothing to really even rate it on. The, the way she ends the verse... First of all, it awkwardly... The way it starts her verse, it just awkwardly cuts in to her flow starting. Like, you could tell there were a couple of more beats left, and then it just awkwardly cut to her starting oh. verse. So I was like, ooh, that didn't help. <laughs> like, you know? A lot of these folks weren't very good at keeping up with yeah. the beat they were given. Uh -huh. and, and I hate that that's the case, because some in some of these, and we'll get to them, they're not bad verses. But it's just delivered in such a way where you could tell they maybe weren't that familiar with the beat. Yeah. Or something was off, and it ends up feeling a bit sloppy. Yeah. So, yeah, with, with Koi Ray, like, her verse, mm. she, it, I, yeah, I can't remember how it starts, but the way it ends, it's like, bitch, I love my brother. My brother loved me, bitch. Look at my wrist. Diamond C, hey. It's like, what? I, I love my brother, and my brother loves me. Is that a brag? Is that going to show the haters? It's the fucking Sailor Moon tuxedo mask. My job here is done. You didn't do anything. <laughs> Above that, I put 42 Doug, purely because I legit couldn't remember anything he said. And, and it was like, I had, and I wrote down what some of what he said, and it was still just kind of like, yeah, this doesn't matter. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting it as I'm getting to the next word in reading, right? Like, we're just like, I can't even sustain what the sentence was because it's so uneventful what he's saying. 42 ended up being my eighth worst mm. or eighth overall. Right. In, in the number nine spot, I got Ruby Rose. Very rocky start. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because the video I watched first. Uh, was the one that started with Ruby Rose. Mm. And the last video I watched ended with uh, Koi Ray. <laughs> so it was like, started with the worst? <laughs> oh, no, never mind. Uh, I ended with the worst. Uh, <laughs> with Ruby Rose, like, she at least had, like, an interesting voice for the delivery and had yeah. a double-time flow near the end. That's why I kind of gave her points. <laughs> but, yeah, as you're just listening to her verse, it's just like, uh, I told him to chill, y'all both mine. The Ryan, the Lamb, they're both mine. The A.B., the Rilly, they're both mine. The Dick and the Bands, they're both mine. It's like, I, I don't think you rhymed anything there. <laughs> Wake up in the morning, cat that money, that's a good start. Bitches swim like fish when I come through like a big shark. F pretty little face, but this body like a porn star. Like the porn star. The inflection there was like, I don't think, people just say porn star. It's not like pronounced like two words like she's pronouncing it as if like it's a double rhyme with the rhyme that came before like it rhymed what, with big, big shark, shark but it didn't no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was like i don't know about this and yeah like i did like how she picked up the pace with the double time flow towards the end but man these lyrics were like nothing special at all unfortunately yeah number eight for me was poo shiesty 
Okay. <laughs> his, his, his verse was just too fucking sloppy. Like, you could barely hear what he was saying. Like, I understand, like, oh, having the Southern draw, but it, it felt like I'm not ready for prime time yet, sort of, the way he was drawing. You know what I mean? I thought he had a decent flow, but way too sloppy. Yeah. And then, like, he had one line where he was just like, you know, Trey Day died on the way to me. Just know that shit was true. Doing this shit for Emmett T while I be styling in the booth. And it was like... This one way where I was like, oh, yeah, he's talking about a friend who died. Like, okay, you know, that's personal to you. And it's like, I'm doing this for him until, uh, are, are you? <laughs> like, I was really hoping that he was talking about somebody else. I was like, please. <laughs> yeah, like, is that what you're wearing the, the point of that? For, for him until, like. In my seventh spot was your boy Pooh Shiesty. So far, um, <laughs> we're not too far off. We've got a pretty common here. consensus. <laughs> Um, uh, so, who is your number seven? Uh, so my number seven was... Please keep it going. Keep the trend going, please. <laughs> it was, uh, it, it was actually Flo Millie. Uh, oh, damn it, yeah. so close. <laughs> yeah, I mean, best dress, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> she had the fucking two-tone, like, on two sides, uh, uh, like, green and pink, I think. Like, light yeah. green and, and had her hair just fucking flopped out really cool. So it's just like, oh, yeah, she looks like the fucking, the supervillain of the fucking, uh... There's always one. Right. <laughs> Every year, there's one, there's one female rapper who... Just fucking comes in dressed like a goddamn... Dressed to kill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and unfortunately, it's usually what you remember most Yeah. about it. I actually put Flo Millie as my number five. In my sixth spot, I got Moray. He was the only one I thought actually sounded like he was freestyling off the dome. Because he even says, like... I had something written down, but fuck that. Right, and that's why I kind of, like, enjoyed him more, because I was like, oh, I'm enjoying the energy of him, like, you know, taking it seriously. All right, fuck it, we're going to freestyle, let's do it. And I, got, I felt the energy, you know? It's it's weird because of the context in which we're talking about these freestyles, because, like, as a freestyle, it was okay. Yeah. But if this is meant to give you an introduction and a taste of what this person is going to be like, going forward like this should be the commercial for when you have an album drop like yeah i should watch your double xl fresh uh freshman freestyle go to spotify follow you as an artist so i get a notification of when your fucking next thing drops you should be on my radar after this and my issue with this is like i didn't feel that way about mostly anybody even the people that i was here for and like i didn't even yeah. feel that way like Last year or the year before, at least as much. Like, I felt like there was some individual personalities. Like, now yeah. it feels kind of interchangeable, honestly. Like, even though they've got more female rappers, it's just like, but I feel like I can't even tell the Ruby Rose from the Coil Array, so. I, I forgot to mention, by the way, that this is the XXL Freshman Freestyle brought to you by FX's Dave. <laughs> Dave! What a joke! Which, a <laughs> former yes. XXL Freshman a uh, little dicky. But just seeing his face, like the huh, uh, I'm the guy promoting it. It's just like, uh, it, it felt like a weird flex by it, like Dicky himself, just to be like, ah, and now my face, now my awkward looking face is on it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but like your music though. What about that? Like, <laughs> honestly, besides a song of his being used as a sound on TikTok for a few weeks, I don't really know about the impact. Little Dicky had as a musician, except for the bitch you don't fuck with Pangea. That's like the only thing. Yeah, late night with this girl, the 10 minute song where it's like, oh, but what if it goes to this scenario? And I actually really liked that song. It, oh, it was the professional rapper as well that was, uh, also, oh, yeah. Yeah, with Snoop Dogg. Like, I kind of like, like, oh, he's doing these, like, long form concept rap songs. It's kind of taking it. Like, I appreciate that. I appreciate what he's doing. And then, like, but then, of course, you know, I remember when we reviewed his album, it was so, like, so taking it too far with the, oh, I'm being so uh, self-effacing and so, yeah. uh, you know, self-deprecating. Look, I've got a small dick. And look, see, I'm, I'm, I'm a, when I made this brag, uh, but then after I made that brag, I kind of like over-explained afterwards and just go like, well, actually, that doesn't really make sense when you think about it. But, you know, I just kind of said that. Yeah. As a it's just like, oh, my God, get it. You're a funny man. Like, say the joke and move on. That's how comedy works. You don't just dwell on the shit forever. Like, <laughs> and, and then after that, we were hit with, the song with Chris Brown, that awkward oh, God. switch places, 
And then fucking Earth. The Earth. That was the, like, I think that was the final spending of his, like... That's when we all decided in unison <laughs> yeah. that we were done. <laughs> that that ship has fucking sailed. But of course, you know it, it, it's his big blowout, right? And what do you do for the for the last ditch effort? You get as many celebrities as you can on a song, you know. Oh God! <laughs> but yeah. I, but the thing is, I actually heard his show is not that bad, <laughs> and it's probably fine. But, but see, it's, yeah, it's the same way I feel about Adam Sandler when you were telling me about uh, whatever movie was actually good. It's just like, no, no, you don't get to get me now. <laughs> oh, it's like my. You be Halloween. <laughs> yeah, like, no, you've already lost your goodwill. You don't get to get it back. <laughs> the you. decently passable Halloween <laughs> comedy. It's and like, then, nope. Didn't he also too late. Do, didn't he also do uncut gems, right? And so we were like, oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, also oh, come on now. Let's let's give a second chance. No bullshit. It was over a decade and a half where where we had agreed that this shit you don't get to do one movie and then it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Seven is flow Millie for me. No one has any, like, punchlines. No one's going, like, no one's giving me any moments of, oh, like, I'm not getting that ever with any of these songs. It's just generic bragging shit. And so, yeah, above her, I put, uh, so number seven was Flo Millie. Above her was Ruby Rose as number six. Because, yeah, I thought she had the double time flow that was cool. But then, like I said, what's what she actually saying? The AP, the yeah. Rolling, both mine. The Rory, the Lamb, they both mine. <laughs> so now we're getting into the top five. So number five for me was uh, Tusi. He was the one whose flow was off at first. Yeah, and he was the one that was most obvious that, like, this is not something that you wrote for this. This is clearly from some sort of love song that you made. And you... Oh. Yeah, and you turned yeah. that into a verse. And so, like, that was annoying. But it was like, okay, but whatever. And, and he had, like, one or two lines where he, like, did try to flip to be like, oh, I'm referencing the other guy that I'm rapping with. Oh, don't you see how hot she is? I was like, eh, mm. all right. That was the video where it was just the two of them. Yes, yes. Blixed? Yeah, Blix. I, I think it's supposed to be Blast, but, like... A blast. Okay. I think every year we get one video that is one less person than the other ones. Like, oh, it's only three people instead of four. This time it's just two. But, but it was so weird because it was like, there, yeah, there's two videos where there's four people, wasn't it? So, like, yeah. why not just put one person where it's three and it, like, I, <laughs> like, because that just makes it less special to just have two, you know? And they gave Tusi way too much time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm just going to guess, without having admittedly done the proper background research, that this is probably from a track called Miss Parker, because he makes that reference <laughs> a couple times. Um, yeah, Friday, get it? <laughs> and it's this has got to be, like, half the song. Right. <laughs> it's way too fucking much. Like... It was an okay. It was an okay as a demonstration and a, like a representation of what this person is like and their style, and in that way, I guess gives us more insight than most people do. But as a fucking double XL cipher, it's it kind of feels like it's cheating. Yeah, and also like it's not even that you can't have a song that you know. Uh, it, it isn't like uh, a verse unto itself, but oh, it sounds cool when you put it on the beat. But this didn't even really sound cool with this. You could like hear that yeah. this doesn't fit this, you know? Um, yeah. And then what was that one line where she was like, he's like, you're the first person that I told my cousin finally came out of the closet. Oh! You're the one that told me to never love him any different. Shit, I won't, but damn, that was bullshit, you know? Like, what? What? I was like, what? What was bullshit? I lost the plot. What are you talking Somewhere about? in there. I don't know what he was talking about. And, and even, like, to that effect, it was just like, what? Why would you bring that up in the context of, like, oh, man, I'm having this sexual tryst with this hot chick, and she told me not to judge my brother. But anyway, it's like, why? <laughs> like, that's not sexy. My number five spot was Flo Millie. We kind of talked about her already. Um, I did like that her verse above most of these gave us a display of what her personality is like. True, she is the one I, that felt like the most personality, yeah. She did stand out. A lot of a lot of these dudes very interchangeable with their same fucking delivery yeah. and personality here. Blast is my number four. Oh, oh really? He lost the flow a few times which right. is kind of what hurt it for me. Um, but I thought he kind of got back on track after a while, um, but it was distracting for me. So that's why he didn't rank, um, higher. 
And then number four was uh, Lakea. I thought she had, okay. I thought she had a cool delivery, and I think she actually had like some nice multis. Uh, although early on, she did r- try to rhyme cocky, cocky with topic. See, it's the thing where it's just like I'm trying to like find like a dope quote, and it's like that was a good like multi rhyme, like rhyming profit with deposit. But what she was actually saying around it didn't actually matter. Like chrome hearts all on my body, bless my hoes, then I profit. All them bitches count in my pocket, so drop a deposit. This is like. That didn't matter as a lot, right, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, but I did like she's like I fly as a pilot. My new season Dior, Fendi, and Prada. How the fuck she a freshman when she dropped <laughs> out of college? Like, you know that was at least like a yeah. nice little oh, uh, you know, like yeah, yeah. My number three was the aforementioned Tusi. My number three was Moray. Oh, uh, okay. Like I said, I, I enjoyed that you could tell that he freestyled it. And when he sang, like, he had a unique timbre to his voice. Yeah. Like, that that was what part, that was part of what helped make him stand out. It's like, okay, I can tell he's freestyling. And he actually does sing at the end. Like, even when Coyle Ray has, like, the fart of a verse that she has. Yeah. He still kind of, like, picks it up. You know, he's like, hey, C-O-I, uh, you're killing it. You know, he, he, he he's a good, he's a good uh, team player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Every year, there's one person who just decides, I'm just going to hype up everyone else around me. And I do appreciate right. that. Because, like, <laughs> wasn't Dickie doing that with Designer? Like, Yeah, he was like, go, go, do it, do it. <laughs> do your gimmick. <laughs> but he was trying to make him at least feel good about it. You know, like, hey, we're all having fun. Uh, my number two was DDG. Interesting. It was my number two as well. I thought this was dope as hell. Um, Mm. very interesting, but if you've been paying attention, you know what that means for me. Lakay is my number one! I gotta say, and I gotta agree with fucking Moray. Fire! Fucking fire! (laughs) Easily the most memorable presence for me, and blew Uh me away most, um, gotta give it to her. Absolutely for me. I definitely respect that. My number one was Blast. Yeah. Uh, Blixt. Uh, Blixt. Who else did that? Oh yeah, Slicksome Jimmy, right? From I, uh, who? What's the name of that group? Uh, uh, you know, No Flex Zone. Even though the song is about flexing. Uh, <laughs> what? I don't know that. Who the hell are those two guys? Come on now, it's uh, Slim Jimmy and Swayze. And Swayze, yeah. Uh, what, really? What? What is the name of that group? No fucking way was it Swayze. I just guessed. Sway Lee, that's his name. Sway Lee. Oh, oh. That's the other guy. You said Swayze. <laughs> hey, I was thinking of fucking, what was it? Yeah. Corona and you Lime? You could be my Corona and Lime. Corona. You <laughs> could be my main squeeze. <laughs> oh, oh, man. There was a time when we let people get away with that shit. Like, all the time. <laughs> corny fucking. <laughs> we loved that shit. We fucking ate that shit up. Fucking. Look at LMFAO set the bar so fucking low that we were just okay with everything. Oh man, the two, the late two uh, thousands, early twenty tens, like that were ju- everything was just like processed to hell. Oh yeah, <laughs> like I feel like we backed off of that since then. Like it's still around, but it's not like the sound now. But I feel like yeah. at that point, it was just like everything was just like all rap songs, all rock songs, all pop songs. They all sound like they were processed through an EDM generic mm-hmm. factory, you know. Like, but uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I went with Blast as my uh, number one. Uh, I liked how he came out. You know, watch me go freshman to go. Can't do nothing less than the most. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, most be de- uh, must be depression. I know. Well, watch my blessing approach, but wh- who be applying the pressure the most? Like I just, he had the fucking flow and rhymes. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I can't even front on that shit. You know. So yeah, that's why he was my uh, number one. Now we play the waiting game of if we completely forget about what we said <laughs> about these people, or if they actually follow it up and right. make us proud. Uh, what was the name of the group that we were talking about? Ray Shriver! That's the name of the freaking oh, group! Oh, Ray Shriver! Ray Shriver! <laughs> fucking, I ain't got no type, right? Yeah, and, I ain't got uh, no type. Uh, Except black, for bad bitches. Black Beatles. Co- coincidentally enough! Oh, and look at that transition! How about <laughs> that? Wouldn't you know it? Thanks to Dr. Goatman. Once again. R.C. 
dare I say it's put up or shut up time because <laughs> I <laughs> I have noticed I couldn't help but notice uh -oh. that another recurring bit <laughs> on this show mm. I've noticed is RC's whenever he gets the opportunity <laughs> to shit talk the Beatles at every possible turn that here we have first Beatles album we reviewed, right? That yeah, this is this is the first one. And <laughs> either I don't know how you're going to feel or how your response is to this is going to be. This might be like we agreed a good bit on the first half of the show, right? This might be either where we completely go our own separate ways, fucking Fast yeah, and the contagious. Furious, <laughs> fucking Paul Walker time. <laughs> We're going to find out. Because this might be, and I got to think, I, I got to think this over. Uh-oh. Um, let me think. Are you choosing your words? Because I don't, I mean, well... It's not like people are going to call me out and disagree with it because it's personal opinion. And my personal opinion on this might change frequently. So I'll just mm. go ahead and say it. This might be the best Beatles album there was. Mm. So with that said, I'm going to throw it over to you. <laughs> because yeah. I think people are going to give a little bit more of a shit what you've uh. got to say about this than me. But... I'll get my two cents in when it when it right. gets to me, but I'm gonna throw it over to you first. Oh, it, it, you know, I'll start by saying, yeah, my reputation precedes me as someone who's always been like uh -huh. the uh, Beatles' greatest group of all time. <laughs> okay, and and I'll admit that comes from like just growing up, you know, naturally, and like my mom didn't listen to the Beatles like that. Mm. Like it was just like they were there, but like I didn't think of it. But then like to like you know eventually like be growing up and hearing like oh no yeah they were supposed to be the greatest group of all time didn't you hear they're the greatest everyone just agreed and so i so like just off the rip me being you know the 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 not even necessarily the contrarian but just the guy who's just like oh yeah greatest band really yeah. so, those are some lofty words well let me <laughs> take a listen and i remember one of the first songs i was listening to was like fucking i am the eggman yeah they are the a eggman the cuckoo cuckoo and i'm just like Oh, so the greatest, the greatest band of all time is making some nonsense fucking songs? Well, oh, The Who was my shit. That was who I was really fucking oh, with. Oh, really? Like, that's who I felt represented the, oh yeah, this is like the 60s, 70s, like awesome band. That's sort of funny. Thing, I know? never really fucked with The Who. I still don't. <laughs> like, I like some of their stuff, but overall I'm like, meh, on The Who. Our experiences, and trust me, I'll, I'll, I'll let you get to your opinion here in a sec. I just think it's funny how absolutely different our experiences with the Beatles are and how, like, your mom didn't listen to fucking Beatles at all. Beatles is the earliest music I can remember ever hearing. <laughs> so and that's like, or text for you of like... <laughs> yeah, they were really the blueprint of like, my early musical tastes. Right. And basically what I have everything to build off on. Like, they're the fucking jumping off point. Uh. So... It's funny how, like, this shit was ingrained in me more than popular music was at a time when I was, when I was young, like, everybody else was talking about the music of the day, but I was way more knowledgeable about this shit from decades before I was born, mm -hmm. which leads me, you know, to feel a bit more biased, and with that, I need to jump in for just a second and address, and <laughs> with that said, maybe don't open the album with Come Together, which oh is basically <laughs> exclusively nonsense lyrics. Yes! And, okay, so getting into the album, let's get into the album, yeah, let's, yes. let's talk about it. So, it's like Come Together was one of those songs that I actually, uh, was one of those, like, Beatles songs that I remember just, like, oh, yeah, that's what I just implicitly just kind of like, because it sounds really good, and it sounds like that, ooh, really swampy, muddy waters, like, and then, of course, you find out they were totally, you know, ripping off their joint from a B.B. King joint, but, you know, so listening to the song, this is one of the songs that I always remember being like, ooh, this sounds like, because, you know, it puts you in a mood, right? Like, it has a mood to it, that yeah. really low, like, bluesy, you know, dusty, like, like, really feels like It is an iconic mood. riff, yeah. Yeah, 
And then I always remember having that feeling of like, you know, there are certain like just iconic sounded lyrics, you know, like uh, one and one and one is three. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh, got to be a joker. You can feel his disease. It's like, ooh, what are you talking about? And then I look at the lyrics and actually take a look at all of them. And I'm like, man, you ain't talking about shit. Like, I what? thought you were just going <laughs> to say, read them over and you're sitting there going, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, and but what especially pisses me off though when I have that moment is just like because they did so much work on that musicality to make it feel like it's talking about something. You know, yeah. like if it was just a doopy doopy doop song, it wouldn't matter. But it's like you're setting up this theme and this feel like it's supposed to matter, and then it's just like oh, it just kind of doesn't. Like, well, then what the fuck then? It absolutely does come off as. Okay, maybe it's just, like, regional references and slang that I don't get. But if you pull it up on Genius, the only annotations are for, like, specific words and phrases. They're like, like, okay, well, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, nothing comes together to mean anything. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that means, what I mean. though, in this context. That's what I need the annotation for. Like, what does this sentence mean? Like, I know what individual words mean. I don't need yeah. help with that. <laughs> I think that's just what pisses me off, like, doubly so, because, like, you know this was considered, like, the biggest band of, like, that hippy-dippy era, right? Yeah. And you know that they are the ones that people are looking to, to, like, set the terms around. And so you're making this song that totally has that feel of being about a revolution, whatever, whatever, and you're not saying anything. And I'm fine with, like, abstract lyrics in some capacity, right? In fact, there are some songs, and I believe on this record, that actually do a good job of, like, you know, it's abstract enough where it's like, I can get meaning out of this if I want to, but the musicality is doing so much that it's like, it's working in conjunction and giving you just this full, like, even if I don't know what I'm looking at with this painting, it's an abstract painting that I can enjoy. But with this, it's so, like, feels like it's about, like, the fucking hook, come together right now! <laughs> but then, over me. And, and it has that feeling of like, oh, wait, that feels like that does me so. What does that mean? And then I remember looking up, yeah, apparently this was a... Uh, uh, Timothy Leary was running for government of uh, governor of California at the time. Now Timothy Leary's a big fucking deal to like the you know hippie movement and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And then to find out they just fucking goofed around when making a song for their campaign. Like someone's asking you like, hey man, I'm trying to make fucking systemic change. Let's fucking do that. And, like right. So it's not just I just made a song. And whatever man. It was specifically someone asked you, hey, you know, we're trying to make some changes. How about you make a song that'll help me really make a political statement? Oh yeah, we'll make one that definitely sounds like one, but when it comes to actually saying shit, we don't, we don't give a shit with millionaires who don't have any real problems. <laughs> you know, like, it so runs into feeling like that, that it's just like, then, ah, like, give it to someone else to write the fucking song then, like, god damn it, guys! That definitely makes sense of why it opens the album then, if it's that culturally relevant. And even to this day, um, is one of the songs that gets the most radio play for a lot of this album i think it doesn't feel that old it doesn't feel mm. that timely you're right it, it, it um it doesn't feel like this is from like yeah someone told you what year and you hadn't heard it absolutely ever before you might not say 1969 you might say right. somewhere in the 70s you know what i mean like yeah and so you're right on that right and there's songs on here that like the Moog synthesizers being used on this album throughout, um, not commonplace, especially in, like, British pop in the late 60s. Like, when it comes up, it's like, whoa, they're actually doing some different shit on here where I, listening to this album, a note that I eventually took away was, it made me sad that this is, like, this is the last album they recorded as a group together. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. Because the next one wasn't... It was recorded before this one came out? Uh, Let It Be was the last one released, but it was recorded before this one. Yeah, how the hell does that work? They, they just do it too much. God they, damn. They were really... <laughs> they, were... <laughs> they basically worked on two albums at the same time, and the, re the release schedule was weird. Man, um, they're doing so much that, like, an album came out before the album that they worked on last came yeah. out. Like, that's so weird. <laughs> so, so when you hear this, and it's like, wow, this is the last shit they were working on, and you hear the direction they're going, it's like, man, if they would have put out one more, it probably would have been so fucking awesome. <laughs> like, damn it. But, yeah, but at the same time, it's like, 
it is so clear how divided they are as a group as to what yeah, they want to absolutely. do. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, part of them is in the future, but they're just so like mad at each other. <laughs> if they could agree on something yeah, and right. put one more album out, it would have been an all time fuck classic. For sure. It is funny. But yeah, go, so going from Come Together, which is a song that is just like, this feels like, and I think that's where the real disappointment comes from, right? Like, it feels like it should be about something, but then when it isn't, it feels doubly disappointing, you know? Because it's like, it, it, it felt like you guys are putting on an act now, right? Like, You know, I gotta point out, too, that it's very weird that the Beatles were approached to write this, and this is the lyrics they put up with. If you listen to, like, John or Paul solo stuff after this... Like, the lyrics aren't like this, so why why are they nonsense here? Like, who wanted the nonsense lyrics? Who was fighting for the nonsense lyrics? Yeah, because I do remember specifically people saying, like, yeah, like, John Lennon gets more political as he goes on to his, like, solo career, so it's like, yeah, what's this about? <laughs> and Paul's <laughs> stuff only becomes more and more mainstream sounding, like, way more poppy than this, so it's like, where did this come from? Yeah, um, but I will say, getting into track two... Now, n- now we're cooking with gas. Track two, something. Uh, Woo! This was my fucking... This is like peak... In fact, no, it's not even this one because it's a later track. But it, I think of this one in conjunction with the other song that I'm thinking of. And I think you already know. But like, yeah, yeah. something... This has like that ethereal sort of like... Uh, There's something in the way. Mm. She was, Like, it's just so... Puts you in this like blue underwater just submerged feel. And it's just like... And even the drums like kind of feel that way. The way they... You know, it's just everything works in conjunction so perfectly. Oh, and the guitar solo. Like, everything just comes together perfect in this song. The fucking switch up. They asking me if... Oh my... Look, I'm just going to cut to the chase on this one. Something is a very strong contender for my favorite Beatles song of all time. I feel that. They I feel don't that. get much better than this. Absolutely. Like, this fucking makes me feel shit. Ugh! And, and I remember having that moment, so like, yeah, when, when I was going through my, <laughs> Beatles ain't so great, you know, I'm fucking uh, Lucy from the uh, goddamn Peanuts, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Beatles weren't so great. <laughs> um, But I remember hearing this song and being like, Oh, okay. So this is what they are. And, you know, having that feeling of like, so where's the album that this is from? Where all the, you know, this is, must be where for all the great songs are, right? Uh, mm. <laughs> you know, like, and that, that's what pisses me off. It, there's never a fully consistent thing that they do. It's always like times where they're like, oh my God, that's absolutely brilliant. I see why you'd be called the greatest off of that song. And the very next song is, oh, someone had a silver hammer and they banged it over people's heads. And it's like, what? <laughs> What's really funny about this, Are and I have you written, me? what I have written down is they didn't want you to get too excited with this album <laughs> because the, the the layout of this track listing, and we'll get more in depth as we go. Come together, hmm, something. Yeah. Ooh! Knocks it out of the fucking park. The bass is like warm, smooth, satiny blanket. You, the, every time you hear it, those notes, ah, yeah. Then Maxwell Silverhammer, hmm. Yep. <laughs> then, then, oh, darling, oh, then Octopus's yeah. Garden, oh, <laughs> why is it like this? It, yeah, right, yeah. Every other song is a, is a cool down. It's like, okay, okay, we can't have two amazing songs in a row, can't do that. We need yeah. to put one in between, why? Why do you need to do that? It keeps fucking with me. The first side of this album is so fucking lopsided. She, she tells Max to say, when the class has gone away, he waits so behind, writing 50 times, I must not be so, oh, 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 <laughs> I must not be so, write it 50 times, right. You uh, fill in the blank. <laughs> That's a pretty she, easy assignment, honestly. Yeah. I, I must she, not be so? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, right. But when she turns her back on the boy, creeps up from behind, dur, dur, bang, bang, Maxwell Silver Hammer came down upon her head. And I'm like, huh? Is this, like, is it about a serial killer? Why is it treating her like a joke? But this can't be about a real serial killer because that's not a real scenario. Oh, I banged someone over the head and the teacher said, oh, you now you've got to stay behind and write 50 sentences saying I must not do that. But then I hit the teacher over the head. Like, this isn't real. Like, what? Do you, what is this scene? And it's like, I like dark humor 
right? Like, Excitable Boy by Warren Zevon, if we're gonna bring that up. Fucking Werewolf of London even has some dark humor in that. And it's an interesting enough of a song, because honestly, this is... This is usually a skit for me when I'm listening to this album in full. And I have written down, too, that listening to this song specifically, I went over to Wikipedia because I was curious as to what the ratings on the album were. And it is across the board. 10 out of 10, 100, 5 stars. And I'm listening to this song and I'm like, I'm having a real hard time agreeing with that right about now. <laughs> so, I don't usually listen to the song in full. I usually hear it start up and skip over it. So, I forgot that the last verse, he's in the courtroom. Yeah. And he's got, like, Ted Bundy-like groupies yeah, in the oh, courtroom. Yeah, Valerie screaming from the gallery. <laughs> like, uh, Maxwell must go free. It's like... Why? Like, at what point did we establish that Maxwell was, like, a fucking handsome looker? Like, some charismatic, oh, the women love this serial killer, don't they? Like, yeah, and they're like, what? oh, he's just a victim of a circumstance. Oh, let him go. And then he somehow is able to kill the judge. How? Yeah, like... How does that happen? Who gave him a hammer? How did he sneak that in? <laughs> How did he get behind the judge? Yeah. Nobody saw him? And, and Come on now. Like, come, we gotta know what happens after that. He doesn't just hit the jugger with a hammer and then walk out. Like, <laughs> the way it fucking. The burp, 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 burp. It's seriously. It, I picture everyone just going, oh, Maxwell, roll the eyes. He's at it again. Uh, it's so funny. Like, if you listen to, like, the interviews from the goddamn people, uh, you know, people in the band themselves, even they don't, like, fucking have these songs. Like, no, see. <laughs> That, that's the thing about that that's really funny. <laughs> if uh, if you watch the movie, the, the Let It Be movie from the 70s, which Peter Jackson is currently working on making like an extended remake of it and, you know, ultra high def and it's going to be, you know, all this unused footage that no one's ever seen before of them mm. working on the albums in the studio. When you see, I want to say George, in the studio hitting an anvil with a hammer for the sound effect on this, he looks miserable. <laughs> and nobody wants to have anything to do with this song. And rumor has it that when Paul says the lines, uh, writing 50 times, he kind of oh, like, laughing. he laughs. Yeah. Rumor is that John is on the other side of the production glass and he just moons Paul. He just oh, pull, pulls his that. fucking yeah. pants down and presses his ass against the glass. Because that's what he fucking thinks of this shit. He <laughs> thinks this is fucking ass. He wants no part of it. And Paul's like, hell, what's going on the album anyway? Fuck you. Yeah, and the laugh is staying, bitch. <laughs> and this is, the, this is the take we're using, bitch. <laughs> the one where you almost fuck it up. So you always have to remember that. Paul was like, Maxwell Silver Hammer was my analogy for when something goes wrong out of the blue, as it so often does, as I was beginning to find out at that time in my life. I bet. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you mean that's what this song is about? Like, Paul burns his toast for breakfast, <laughs> right? And he goes, oh, Maxwell Silver Hammer again and all that. No, I yeah. doubt that! <laughs> like, what? That's not what like, you stop, say, yeah, Paul. Stop trying to make Maxwell Silver Hammer happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a thing. Stop it's trying so to make Maxwell Silver Hammer a thing. And it's so funny going to the point you said about George uh, George Harrison just uh, uh, depressingly hitting a, a fucking anvil. Ting, it, ting. Uh. Is it that hilarious? Is it like of like you know it, it, how much work could that honestly be to ask? Right to just like <laughs> just come in and hit the hammer. Like anyone could have done that. with a fucking smile on their face. But there's something about the fact that you know that they probably told him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's always just, like, it's specifically... Like, there's a, there's a sense of, like, they're holding each other hostage. <laughs> like, <you laughs> Begrudgingly know. hitting an anvil with a hammer with such <laughs> resentment. Yeah, it's like, you you can almost hear the resentment in how yeah. the hammer is being hit. <laughs> with each clang. <laughs> yeah, because it's not fully... It's not fully hitting with the full hammer. You can tell there's a sort of uh, <laughs> melancholy to the hammer. Ringo says, uh, the worst session ever was Maxwell Silver Hammer. It was the worst track we ever had to record. It went on for fucking weeks. I thought it, I thought it was mad. And then Paul says, they got annoyed because Maxwell Silver Hammer took three days to record. Big deal. 
<laughs> I like how he just fucking hits that fucking Houston's bag. Big deal. Like, still on the album, though, wasn't it? Uh, what, are you, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> that is one song, though, um, where I do got to give it credit for the use of the synthesizer on the war, 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 war. Like, that's, like, it's just a sound that they weren't really, like, using much. And to hear it pop up on here is unexpected. Yeah, there is something about doing, like, oh, this, like, twee 1920s thing, but with this, yeah, newer yeah. instrument. There's something to that, but it doesn't come to anything, because he's a fucking dippity doo da like... Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we get to Oh Darling, and... Oh Darling, man. I'm not gonna lie to you, I did not enjoy this one no. as much. Because to me, it just kind of felt like... Yeah, we already heard you guys doing the, I'm doing the screaming black guy voice, like, eight records ago on the first albums. I thought you guys evolved beyond this. So oh, it just kind of felt like, no. you know, oh, darling, please believe me. I was like, oh, my God. Like, uh, <laughs> I, no, I, I just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> I must disagree. When Paul screams on this song it's fucking chef's kiss for me absolutely i'm here for that shit look now this feels weird because i'm about to I'm oh about to because say, you really dug octopus's garden octopus's garden i really like it ah, get the fuck out of here. look i, I, I don't hate movie. this song as much as it as much as the hate it gets i'll agree there too i like the chorus and right. i think the instrumental is fun the verses yeah. though it's such a waste. Yeah, for me. no, he's not saying about anything. It's just repeating the yeah. same idea. We will be under the waves and we will be happy. Like, yeah, I wish it was like, go somewhere with it. Oh, he lost his rocket. Then he found, like, just something happened. Like, uh, uh, and now I remember, like, listening to this song and, you know, uh, a bunch of the other songs, what, uh, fucking Yellow Submarine or whatever the hell. And oh, being yeah. like, yeah, like, I remember having a feeling like, these are fucking songs for babies. Like, yeah. how is this? How are these the rock gods? If this song came out today, it would get fucking laughed at. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no one in the 90s is making octopuses. Go oh, but put it three decades ago and now it's respectable. Like, come on now. Yeah. But, like, this is the one I thought was the most fun. Because, like, okay, as far as, you know, making children's songs go, this one does sound the most like, a, oh, shit, I might hear this on fucking Spongebob and, you know, wouldn't blink yeah. twice. And be like, oh, what is this fun-ass song, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I can't hate on that one. Of all the preschool-sounding-ass songs that they make, this one is, like, the most fun for me. <laughs> it is it creative. Sounds. I'll give yeah. them that for sure. And it, it's apparently the only song that Ringo wrote. So I find it so funny that, you know, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the accepted thing is that, like, oh, only the gods of Paul McCartney. And, uh, uh, you know, well, I guess George Harrison, but uh, especially... Um, um, Lennon, yeah. Yeah, Lennon, you know, they, they're the great... And then Ringo, I mean, you know, whatever. But for me, I'm like, actually, I mean, this is all goofy shit. Let's not act like, oh, this is the one blemish. Like, no, a lot of this is goofy. And in that realm of a lot of this being goofy... I had a good time with this one, you know? They normally give him one song per album. I think that's the way it goes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Octopus's Garden is unmistakably Ringo. Um, <laughs> Harrison's presence on this might be because his songs are so fucking good. Um, at least the ones that he actually uh, delivers vocals on. We mm. get... Uh, we get George singing lead on something, mm. and on Here Comes the Sun, and it's like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> why is he not singing yeah. more? Because goddamn, George has oh, such man. a great fucking voice. That's insane. Because my brain is just going like, oh, it's the happy, you know, normal fun sound. Maybe this one's like Paul singing, you know. But that is hilarious to be like, oh no, it's the guy that you weren't even thinking about. <laughs> That's George again. Damn. But, but before we get to Here Comes the Sun, we gotta get to... <sighs> Look, I, I wrote down... I want you... Dun, 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 dun. I want you so bad. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, bum, bum. Look, th 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 this is another one of those songs where I'm like, I, I felt the same. Well, maybe... Hmm. 
Like, I feel a similar feel to track one, where it's like, mm. this sounds so cool, and the musicality of what you're doing, but there's so little words, and I really yeah. want there to be more words, because, like... I get you. Come on. Now, but then, like, but this is one of those songs where it's like, yeah, there are less words, and it kind of makes you think about the fact that there are less words, right? Like, by them there being not that many. And, you know, and so it, like... I kind of appreciate it on that, you know, um, not meditation, um, but sort of like, uh, uh, not even like a drone, but like just sort of like you're in this mindset and that is what this song is about, right? It's not about going from verse to chorus, right? It's about, you know, I think they had said, um, somebody had, uh, um, I think it was Lennon, he said, uh, uh, oh, people say he lost his talent for lyrics, it's simple and boring. Uh, She's So Heavy was about Yoko, when it goes down to it, like she said, when you're drowning, uh, you don't say, I would be incredibly pleased if someone would have the foresight to notice me drowning. And go, no, you just scream. And so it's like, so in She's So Heavy, I just saying, I want you so bad. Like, and I, I like, and that's one of those things where it's like, there is a beauty in simplicity, right? Like, yeah, we shouldn't be like overcomplicated things, but like, <laughs> it's that certain thing where I'm like, oh, but I want, there's so much good musicality in here. I want it to be characterized by something. Yeah. And it's like, I remember watching the, uh, you know, the Across the Universe movie that gets a lot of shit. Oh, yeah. And, and and rightfully so. <laughs> to, to a lot of, it it the, definitely has its mockable moments, yeah. Yeah, but uh, the I want you, she's so heavy part, actually oh. was like, I remember that being the best fucking part. Because yeah. it's, like, <laughs> it's so, like, not, you know, the song so doesn't tell you what it's about, that they kind of add their own meaning. And like, oh, you know, the guy's going off to war, and so Uncle Sam is saying, I want it's you. I like, want you. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> and then at the end, when they're carrying Lady Liber- Liberty on their back, she's so heavy. Oh, my That's God. Cool, I forgot you know? about that. Like, <laughs> that was dope. Yeah. Yeah. S- s- Singing Dear Prudence to a girl in the closet, though, maybe a little ham handed. <laughs> oh, oh, she came in through the back window. <laughs> it's a bit much. Here. But well, yeah, yeah, fuck, I remember that part. Yeah, that was the mo- that was when the movie went the hardest. And man, <laughs> I, I write, I, I say this at least once per review. This song fucks. My <laughs> god, the <laughs> ominous as fuck intro, the bass riff over the organ chords. Right. Ah! Oh my god! This song is a fucking monster. This is a fucking monster. Look, this is how you end a side of an album, by the way. Right, fucking right. Fucking hell. The groovy as hell instrumental break when it fucking, like, just kind of all the words drop out and it just kind of, like... Like, oh man. Mm. When John screams so loud his voice cracks. Oh! Yeah. Oh my god, and then just how this song fucking ends, look. Where you hear more and more sound effects kind of start to creep in and shit. It's the fucking Moog again! The (laughs) static, and the fucking, just that creeping white noise that just gets louder and louder until it just cuts off so abruptly. It just goes completely silent. All of it, at once. The tape is just cut. And that's side one. Fuck me. And this is the last song all four of the Beatles worked together in the studio on. And mm, it's like, wow. th- God, this is where it could have went, huh? Yeah. Fuck! Mm, yeah. That song's so good. But then side two starts with Here Comes the Sun, and it's like, and, oh, man, God, it just keeps going. Glorious. <laughs> it's a glorious try. I, think, I oh. think it is maybe, like, their best song. Here Comes the Sun is the it's fucking good. song. That's the smash hit. That's the, yeah. you know, if, if everything else of their discography is erased, like, that's what is going to be remembered. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so nice. And it's so nice. Like, it was like one of those things where it was like, I, I, I didn't even believe that it was them. Like, I was just like, <laughs> this has to be some, like, old standard that came out, like, 200 years right? ago. Right. I was like, no, that's them? Because I remember hearing, like, Nina Simone did a cover. I was like, oh, so this must be, like, some older song. I was like, no, mm. no, that was them. I was like, what? <laughs> You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's all right. Do, 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 do. Oh. Apparently, this is a song where they were like, one of them, I think it might have been George Harrison, was contemplating leaving the band. Mm. You know, one of the first of many times that they contemplated it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, he, was, uh, he was holding the hammer in his right. hand, <laughs> <laughs> just looking at it like, today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> it could be now. It could be now. <laughs> It could be right now. I don't have to bang this one more time. I can stop. 
<laughs> but um, apparently he was hanging out with Eric Clapton in his garden oh, yeah. and they were playing like guitar. So it's like, and that's what the song sounds like. It definitely sounds like someone outside of the studio, you know, getting a little fresh air. <laughs> yeah. Touching grass for real. Yeah, man. Uh, uh, so yeah, that uh, undisputed classic there. No, no one's arguing with that. Um, and, and then to go from Here Comes the Sun to Because. And Matt, see, earlier on this, I was saying, oh, I feel like my favorite track is between, uh, uh, you know, mm-hmm. the uh, something and and this track. And then, you know, you I brought up it. Here Comes the Sun. And I was like, oh, shit, now I don't even know what it is. <laughs> like, yo, this is like the triumvirate of like, it's right here. Because, yeah, Because is the Ooh. one. Oh, the psychedelia vibes. Just, Chills. It just drowns you in it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because the world is round, it turns me on. Oh, the harmony. Oh. oh, my God. Oh, the fucking the fucking Beach Boys wish they could make a track this fucking yeah. <laughs> deep and, and just like, ah, just pulling at so your So atmospheric. Soul. Yeah, right, and, and, and like, again, it's like, this is what they could be if they just quit fucking around. <laughs> yeah, this is the song I have written down. This is the song that made me sad that we wouldn't, that, that like, because of all the, uh, like, the possibilities from this song in particular is like, yeah. man, the places they could have went. Fuck, they could have yes. ushered in such a unique sound in the 70s. You're absolutely right, like, oh my god, just the way, and and this is the one where it's like, the lyrics are really abstract, and they yeah. might not me. You might not know what it means, but like they put you in the mood so well. And there's no lyric that like, because you know, even, there will be some songs that I do like uh, on here that be like, okay, it's kind of abstract. But then there will just be one or two lyrics that was just so weird that like, okay, I can't help but think about that. What the fuck did that mean? And for you to say that so probably, you got to know that that's like a big lyric that's standing out, but you just don't. You're not imbuing this with any meaning? (laughs) Like, why not? Like, (laughs) you know? But, yeah, but this one, it's just, like, just, it's a mood. That's all you can fucking say. It's a fucking mood. It's a fucking vibe. Absolutely. (laughs) Now, here, I think, is where things are going to get interesting. Mm. We've come to the Abbey Road medley, RC. (laughs) And I don't know if... You rank if you rated each individual part. Oh yeah, yeah, on its own each, or not? Each track. Okay. Yep, yep. That's how we're doing things. Okay. If they if they're deciding to like taking one song that clearly could have been one song and then just splitting it into two for no fucking reason, fine. They are two different songs, asshole. Yeah, this is parts of a bunch of different incomplete songs crammed together to form one medley. That kind of connects at times, other times not as well. Starting with You Never Give Me Your Money. You Never Give... And this is another one of those songs that I remember just kind of like hearing out there in the ether, right? Mm. And like just hearing the song and being like, you know, You never give me your money, you never give me your funny paper. Mm. And just being like, you know, oh, I don't know what that lyric is, but I bet if I <laughs> listen to the song, I might, right? Like it, it has that sort of feeling. And then mm. you listen, you're like... Man, what the fuck are you saying? Like, what? <laughs> In the middle of investigations, are huh? you don't only, you don't give me your money. You just give me your funny paper. What scenario are you talking about? What scenario are you talking about where someone's like, "Hey, uh, you never, you know, help me out with a little bit of money. You only give me what, monopoly money. What are you talking about? That's what about? I thought. Fake money. This yeah. is a real scenario you're talking about. Literally nothing. But it sounds. But it has the emotionality in the delivery. Like it is talking about something. So it's like, why are you acting like it is when it's not? <laughs> like you know, why are you fucking with me right now? <laughs> like Sun King is kind of a forgettable part for me. Uh, it sounds good. Yeah, it, it does sound good, right? And I remember being like, having that feeling of like, oh, here comes the Sun King? And I'm like, here comes the sun oh, King. check him out. So, is that related to the Here Comes the Sun song? Because you know, you made a song called Here's, Here Comes the Sun, like, not even five tracks ago, right? Like, so is that yeah, one? Oh, just, no, it's just not. Two tracks not, ago. In, not in any way is that related. <laughs> you, you just wrote these lyrics about. <laughs> Like, in the one way where it seems like there is some sort of returning motif, but no, that's not related to that. That, 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 You're an idiot for thinking it would have had anything to do with it. It's like, (laughs) what? And and before you can even get the question out, they're singing in Spanish. Right! And it's just like... Like, what? Okay. 
And, and 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 I was listening to it and I was like, I was thinking, I was like, oh, actually, that kind of sounds like it might be Italian. Oh, let, let me look up what they're saying. It was it. Yeah, I wasn't oh, sure all, actually. Yeah, and then I looked it up. It's like, oh, uh, because uh, I was like, oh, it sounds like some Italian. They're like, that's really cool. Let me look up what it means. Oh, it's a hodgepodge of Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese words that don't make any sense. <sighs> I'm so is. sick. I am so <laughs> sick of this being the case where it's like, oh, there could be something interesting. No, they weren't thinking that hard. That was you doing the thinking too hard. It was like. Then what are we paying these people for? <laughs> yeah, I, I should have guessed, honestly. Like, Italian and Spanish are such similar languages anyway that you could trick me into thinking it was one of those. But then for it to just be nonsense lyrics, uh, again, again, it's like, man, all right, you guys would. Of course you guys would. Again, it sounds like something, though. They made it sound like right. something. <laughs> yeah. you, you know that song where... I forget the nationality, but it was a person trying to make a, a, a like an English pop song. I think I know what you're talking about. And it's all nonsense, but he delivered it in such a way that it still like went to fucking number one in the country <laughs> because yeah. like it sounded so authentic. Right, right. That's what the I'm, Beatles are doing here. I mean, straight up, but like, I hate to be spiritual because I do think they are more talented than. Than uh than the group that I'm about to bring up, but the fucking uh, urban dance squad is what sounds like this shit. Oh, like that's what so much of this shit just sounds like. Uh, oh, it's just nonsense. Oh, okay. Uh, urban dance squad. Uh, rename some of your tracks to be uh, uh to be as uh, made by the <laughs> Beatles. Boom, you'll get some top forty fucking hits in all the fucking respect. I guess that's all you have to do. Just say <laughs> that your nonsense song was made by the Beatles and now it's respected. And you know, like I said, I can even agree that some shit is just a mood. Like I don't really know what because is about, but it, right. it did such a good job of integrating things so well that your your brain doesn't want to ask the question of what it means because you're enjoying it so much. You know? Yeah, from Sun King is where we go to the very short songs, the string of Mean Mr. Mustard, Polythene Pem, She Came Through the Bathroom Window, and Golden Slumbers. I mean, Mr. Mustard, I was like, I guess this is nice, but before I could even like write down like my next note on what I thought about it, it just flipped to the next song, and I was like, Now it's oh. Polythene Pam! <laughs> I was like, wait, uh, huh, what? <laughs> That's and then, done. And just the, the first lyric, it just hits you so quick. And you should see Polythene Pam. She's good looking, but she looks like a man. And I'm like, I'm trying to, what, what, what? <laughs> like, okay. what, what, what? <laughs> like, what? What are you trying to say, Beatles? <laughs> it's like they just mention Pam in Mean Mr. Mustard. And they think, well, now you're going to be curious about what's going on with Pam over here, right? Let's just talk about Pam instead. Like, what? I didn't even remember a Pam being brought up. When did that happen? Pam brings Mean Mr. Mustard out to look at the Queen. Oh. Only place that he's ever been. What type of fucking... Uh, Always uh, shout out something I've seen. Uh, 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 new Star Wars writing is this. Where they're like, oh, did you like that one thing? Well, let's explain the, the story behind that one thing. How did Han Solo get the dice that, that he uses on the fucking uh, 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 Millennium yeah. Falcon? Let's go into that backstory. Like, oh, what? <laughs> yeah, here it is. It's the beginning of the second verse. His sister Pam works in the shop. She never stops. She's a go-getter. Okay. So... And then at the end of that verse, we're done. We're out. We're on to Pam's song. Yeah. So it's like, so, okay, so by that, like, I thought Meet Mr. Sun was like an abstract thing, but I, I guess it is a real person because Polythene Pam is, is their sister? So is He's it... a very real sister, yes. <laughs> yeah, no. And then, before we can even really give Pam the due attention... <laughs> I guess she, she meaning fucking <laughs> Polythene, Polythene Pam. Pam, fucking pronouns pal, is the one coming through the bathroom window? Uh, I, I Protected by guess. a silver spoon. I don't know. <laughs> I thought Polythene Pam had to work at 15 clubs a night because she's trying to get money, but now she has a silver spoon in her mouth? Yep, here what? she comes. Oh, look out. <laughs> I don't understand. And, and the thing about it is, like, I feel like it's so much like... When it comes to what they're doing here, it's like, yeah. oh yeah, these are cool gimmicks that don't really amount to much and seem kind of silly if you know anything about like musicals and operas where they know how to use motifs and shit, where there's a purpose to using a motif and, mm. and reoccurring themes. But with here, it feels like, you know, it, it feels like them doing stuff to call attention to the fact that they're doing it, you know, like uh, there's no real reason, right? Where it's just like, 
you know, oh, if you think about it, it could mean something, but it just feels like where before is like these abstract lyrics and they're calling to something and maybe it means something, but it doesn't. But now it's like they're specifically using the music musicality to call back to things that don't mean anything if you look into it. And it's like, it feels like, yeah, this is impressive if you're like, don't know dick about music. You're like, what? A recurring theme? All of the, she never gives me my money theme came back? Wow, that's incredible. I've never heard anyone do that on a rock album. But it's like, if you don't dick about music, like, yeah, bringing back motifs, that's just a thing people do. So this just isn't that special. And then Golden uh, Slumber is Golden in Slumbers to carry nice that sounding. way. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, as I, <laughs> that's the that note I wrote down. It was just like, as, as it gets to this point, like, these songs are so short. It feels like the first songs are them, like, you know, they're trying to be, you know, well, we've got some contention with each other, but we're still trying to be the most respected group by doing this really big, intelligent, like, you know, big, bloated project that's really going to mean something. And then it's like, the last half was just like, all right, this shit ain't last. I'm pissed off. Let's let's wrap these songs up. Like, <laughs> that's what it felt like. It like felt like a group trying to get out of the studio in real time. Like, <laughs> fuck it. This song goes into this song now. Who cares? <laughs> but here's where I gotta say though, the end. Come on. What, uh, what was get it? in? Oh. <laughs> it was like yeah, I liked how it started. Oh yeah, all right. Are you gonna dream my dreams tonight? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The fucking drum solo. Right. Ringo and, killing it. <laughs> and in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. It's like a huh. It this song felt like it should have came at the end of other songs that were trying to do something. You know, like <laughs> like like uh, I guess this is a nice ending, but. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> like, you know, it's so weird. <laughs> like, this is a fitting ending credit song, but what did I just watch? <laughs> now, here's what is really funny to me. In that, because Spotify is the way Spotify is, right? Mm -hmm. Where it just lays the songs out how it is. I'm curious what you thought <laughs> when Her Majesty just pops up. Oh, yeah, when it just, like, kind of goes silent for a couple of seconds, and I'm like, oh, I thought there was one more track. And then, the queen is a really nice girl, but she doesn't have a lot to say. Her <laughs> is a pretty nice girl, but she changes day to day. Blah, blah. I want to tell her I love her, but I gotta have a belly full of wine. And I'm like, oh, what, is it critiquing the queen, or is it praising the queen? It's just not doing much of anything to say anything. And so I was like, all right, well, I guess that happened. What? The whole medley are unfinished songs. Just put together but her majesty this like 16 second thing we knew where we wanted to put it but we just thought better of it and didn't put it in there so we put it as a, we we put it as a hidden track yeah a fucking hidden track that's what it basically is and after the after the end finishes so when they re-released the album recently as like a deluxe a super deluxe or whatever mm. As a track on one of the uh, bonus discs, it has the original layout with all the songs going into each other how they originally intended. And I think, if I'm remembering correctly, that Her Majesty was supposed to come between Mean Mr. Mustard and Polythene Pam. Huh. Interesting. Because... You know, he's going out to look at the queen. Only please, so we're talking yeah, about the queen. See, that would have been like interestingly enough. Yeah, if that would have been put there, it would have felt a lot more like I would have gotten a lot more of the feeling of these being vignettes, right? By having such a quick song coming in the middle, you know, like earlier I said that during songs like um, Maxwell Silverhammer, that it was very hard for me to look at this song in particular and. Songs like Octopus's Garden, and I'm looking over at the five-star ratings and everything and being like, yeah, I don't know about that, Chief. I don't know if I'd go all the... I don't know if I'd go that far. Still ended up with a four and a half, though. Uh, I gave it a three. Um, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Get your torch and pitchforks, folks. <laughs> oh, no! RC, look. I, I, I love you like a brother. <laughs> But but I'm not gonna be here for you when the, <laughs> when the I cannot the I can't gate. save you from this one. <laughs> I like, can only do so much. But you know, like and, and uh, you know that three comes well, from. Well, look, I I am editing the podcast, right? Maybe maybe I took 
I could take earlier where he gave a song of five. Hmm. And ah, just kind of. Hey, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> do some, uh, five George Lucas five. trickery. <laughs> but no, and it's like, it's not even like, you know, just saying this completely an average album, because it's like, you know, we talked about it. There are cuts on here that are goddamn heavenly. Like, there is so much good on here that it's just like, oh my god, if it was just these six tracks, it would be like, fucking get down on your knees and praise the greatest album made of all time. But I'm sorry. Um, let's go through it. Come together. Come on. Maxwell Silverhammer. Come on. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you can feel how you feel about Oh Dar- it, it's so interesting. Oh Darling and Octopus' Garden are the weird, like, opposite ones that I feel. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, but uh, you never give me your money. Come on. Like, and oh, yeah, the way it recurs later on where it sounds like it's supposed to be important in that one song where you hear the grand uh, uh, repetition in the brass. Ba, 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 ba. Mm. Oh, isn't it so yeah. cool that they brought the riff back? But why? Because it has nothing to do with it. And the original song didn't feel like it was about anything either. So why should I care? Why should right, I care? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, fucking... Uh, uh Pan. Come on, you know these songs don't. Nobody's listening to these songs. Who's really listening to Polythene Pan by itself? Who's really listening See? to "She Came Through the Bathroom Window" by itself? Come on! I asked you how you did it. I ranked the medley as one song. Hmm. Because and, and, and like, yeah, you, you, like, if you're listening to these songs, you're probably just listening to them together, and that's just the way. Yeah, yeah. Most people yeah, like, listen to it. I get that. And like, you might listen to. You never give me your money on its own because it's the longest. But then after that, I don't know if you're sitting through Sun King, you know, onward. Um, but for me, that whole thing is an experience. So that's why I rated that as one song. And just as its own thing, I can't hate on it. It does have corny parts. But as a sum of its parts, I don't think it's a bad track. You know, even if you think like, oh, these songs are bad. But if you think about them together, they really kind of, it's like, did they really? Did, you know, like, <laughs> like it's cool that they're doing this. But if someone else did this and was more capable of it and actually tied it together, would would you really be like, oh, but the Beatles did it? The no, you'd be like, oh, but they did it and actually made it tie together. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> That's where I take issue is because I don't think it's just the brand band recognition because like. Oh, you know, if this was Urban Dance Squad, yeah, but Urban Dance Squad wouldn't do it as good. Like you're, that's the you're, thing. You're right, though. You're it right. It would sound like Urban Dance Squad. It wouldn't <laughs> sound like the Beatles. The Beatles have a sound, and they, I think, they have a way of getting away with whack shit. There's something and in the making way. It, and making it sound good and passable. That yeah, I can't defend the lyrics to "I Am the Walrus," but I'll still <laughs> listen to that song because it sounds good to me. That's my opinion. I Please know the lyrics are whack. Piece of something did it, did it together. You're right. <laughs> that makes no fuck sense, and I won't fight you <laughs> on that. But I still think it sounds dope. See, that's the thing. I'll like at the end of the day, I'm still like, yeah, it's not a bad song though. Like, yeah, the lyrics are bad, but I'm still here for the sound of it, and I'm still rocking with it. Even though, like, yeah, it still feels silly as fuck if you're gonna sing along with it, and I won't. But, you know, I think that's where we differ on them. Yeah, and, and see, like, but it's not even me saying that they're completely whack, though, right? Because I will still say to you that, you know, yeah, even before I, you know, listened to a full album, I remember, like, oh, yeah, hearing that song whack, is that song's whack. And then I'd hear, like, Penny Lane or, um, mm. what was the name of the song? Um, uh, e- Eleanor Rigby, which I think is a fucking classic. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. So they can get down, they can get busy with some real shit when they're not playing around. But like, yeah. for me, I'm like, you know, there. I feel like there are people who go like, they made these great songs and that makes them the greatest. But the way I feel like it is like, okay, they made these great songs and these songs are still there and we can't act like they're not there. So that tarnishes the legacy. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I would say the same thing about Eminem. Yeah, I can talk all day about like, oh, the first album <laughs> was great, but he kept making albums. So I'm sorry. That counts. Like, you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, yeah, I, I personally, I personally think the songs that are really, really good make up for the whack ones and make them that easier, that much easier to ignore. Like, especially on an album mm. like this, like I can forget that Maxwell Silverhammer is on this album. Track three, you <laughs> when 
when it's got because and be, when it's got True. something yeah. and songs like Oh Darling, which I liked way more than you did, and fucking <laughs> Here Comes the Sun, and I Want You. More of this album is legendary and untouchable than the whack shit mm. that it outweighs it. It it, it kind of, it, it goes over into that other pool where it's like, man, I could forget the other shit. I can't stay mad at you, Abbey Road. You fucking had so much dope shit that I could ignore the whack shit, you know? Right. Um, but who knows? I, I, just, I just really wish that all of... I just wish I could take all of Paul's shit and put that on one album that I don't need to listen to, and then <laughs> you know all that whack shit, and take the George Harrison and the and the um, mm. um um Lennon shit that was really good, and just put all that together in one mega album where it's just like, oh, and this is why you res- put respect on their name because they just did this un uh, like unbreakable chain of really good songs, and then just don't pay any attention to any of the shit that Paul did, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And, and I'll tell you what I wish. I wish to get requests for other Beatles albums. Oh, God damn you. <laughs> because if this is, in my opinion, the best, where are we going to go? <laughs> yeah, what, what's Magical Mystery Tour? What's fucking... Uh... <laughs> Ooh, see, Sgt. Pepper would be the shoe-in, because that's the fucking, like, oh, that's number what one of. album of, of all time on so many different lists that... If we were to get a, like, I'm not going to tell you not to request Sgt. Pepper. I, I'd have no problem listening to that one. But if you do want to request one that's maybe has a bit more misses than hits, be mm. my fucking guest. That would be, see, that'd be a lot of fun. See, you know they're going to request, like, the really early albums where they were just making, like, you know, covers of Black Songs and shit. And just be like, what do you think of oh, this yeah, cover it, of a Black Song? What do you think of that cover of a Black Song? It's just a bunch of show tunes <laughs> and... Right. <laughs> fucking Little Richard covers. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so if there is an album, not necessarily a Beatles album, but, you know, any album that you might uh, want to hear our opinion on, we are still taking requests at the 120 uh, price point on our uh, Kofi that is ko-fi.com slash going off. And it is 140 if it's an album that you made yourself or you know a friend that you're trying to promote maybe just trying to get our um opinion on their work independent stuff that we would never find on our own on spotify you know we are getting back closer and closer to the magic number we want to be at at the number of requests in the queue so we have an idea a time frame of when we're going to be um reducing the price and what price we are looking at but we will let y'all know closer to when that time comes. So stay tuned and follow us on uh, Twitter and all our socials so you don't miss any updates like that. As a small aside update for the Rifcoms channel, if you are listening slash watching, I guess, on uh, my YouTube page. You are page. looking at the still image uh, uh, of this YouTube video. <laughs> yeah, you know. If you have it on in the background while you're doing something else and you just don't have Spotify or whatever. Um, we haven't figured out our hard drive situation just yet. So we, we've we tried a few different things. They haven't worked. So it's looking like we're going to have to send it off and have it looked at by a professional because we are fresh out of ideas. Next time we get around to actually filming some content, we'll edit it and there will be new content. But... That might be a while. So just being completely upfront <laughs> with y'all. To that end, I also mentioned this last week, but I lowered the fan house price from $5 to $3. Um, still trying to upload more stuff to that to make it worth your while. And RC, you are doing the uh, Twitch streams, holding it down over on that side. Yes, yes. Twitch, uh, Twitch.tv slash Rap Critical. And uh, on my Patreon, uh, the... Review a new episodes as well as rap critic episodes are now uh, exclusively going to be uploaded there. So you're going to get uh, all four of the things that I individually do like in one place, and you you get to get it early and fast and hard and fast and <laughs> coming at you. <laughs> and also you get to join the uh, the the Discord, uh, the RC Discord. Lots of uh, fans are on there chatting it up and talking and sometimes requesting albums that happens. <laughs> <laughs> they sometimes work in, in, in tandem, work in conjunction, or am I using the right word? They work together. They 
they come together and conglomerate or I, I feel like I'm using everything but the right word that I'm thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, you know, it, it do all that fun, sexy stuff. Like I said, follow me on the, on the Twitches, uh, you know, on the Patreons, uh, follow me on social medias, on Instagrams, because that's where you, you know, will be getting when I'm doing the streams and, and when we're putting out the uh, mm. uh, reviews and stuff like that. So yeah, get with it, yeah. act like you want it. <laughs> Dope. Um, and all of our old episodes of Going Off are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. So if you want to binge, play some catch-up, listen to our old episodes, they are all there for you. And I want to give you a, a special thank you for sitting around and spending your time with us, listening to our show, and supporting us on uh, on a weekly basis. It means... The world to us. And until next time for Going Off, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. And yo, I found a secret message when I played an early Beatles song backwards. Yo, listen. And and then at this point, I want you to like play like uh, She Loves You backwards while I'm saying this part, right? <clears throat> hey, Paul, let's get rid of Clarence the Fifth Beatle and steal all his really cool ideas. Wow, hey, you know, that sounds like an open and shut case to me. Wow, look at that, man.